Uh, you you have got that right. Um, that leads us into somebody else gone far too soon. Uh, Carl Anthony Towns' mother uh, passed away from COVID-19 complications. And it's just another example of how serious uh, this thing that we are dealing with actually is, right? Yep. Um, and she was she was relatively young. I want to say her name was Victoria. And I had, I had it pulled up and closed it. I don't know why I did. Uh, but... Yeah, she uh, she passed away. I think she was like in her sixties, you know, early sixties. Yeah, that's real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's real young. You know, so this is this is something that is. When when you told me about that, I was like, let's talk about that. It'll be real quick, but like that's that's our parents' age. Okay, it's my yes. mom's age, short mom's age. Yeah. the The thing that's hard about that is frustrating. <clears throat> so many people around where we live, you know, we we are very much Mississippi buckled by belt. We were the, we were the last people to get on board with trying to control this thing and it got out of hand. And then all of a sudden we were like, Oh shit, we got to do something. Yeah. Our, our governor is still my, my, yes. Oh yeah. Anyway, Tater. my, my, my mom is one of, and stepfather, one of two of the people that just don't take this very seriously and still kind of go about now. Thankfully everything's closed and they're both yeah. retired. So there's not a lot for them to do. True, true. But if everything was still open, they'd live their life like nothing was going on, nothing was different. Because of that, I feel like a bastard, but I punish them. And then they want to come see the grandkids. No, no, you're not. I'm sorry, it's Easter. You're just not going to see them. We, we have you to do the same thing. You can FaceTime them all you want. Yeah. But you are not staying in. You are not taking this seriously. And you are having people over the house every night and hanging out and living your life like normal. And I'm not telling you to be a recluse, but you gotta you gotta try to be careful because both of them have complications to where if they get it, it's bye bye. Yeah, it's over. It could, it could I don't be have a mom stuff. anymore. My kids lost their grandmother, and so when I heard this, I thought it puts it a little bit in perspective. His mom is very close to the age of my mom, and yeah. I watch her not take this serious at all, and it just bugs me. Not saying his mother wasn't taking it serious. It's a it's just a thing where this thing is is real. It is real. Yeah, and the, and, and it's it's kind of ridiculous that it takes celebrities and what Joe Diffie, John Prine, guys like that. That's and then, it. it does take celebrities though. And the, and and it takes those that you feel like you can actually relate to. And Carl Anthony Towns, a young guy, just lost his mother to this this virus that we have been trying to fight. And obviously. We don't know how seriously they were taking it or anything like that, but it, it shows that even if you were taking it seriously, you don't know. I yeah, mean, it's it's just ridiculous. So, it, yeah, it, well, it's a scary here's thing. A, here's the reason that it's, it, it's, it is the way it is. And this might make me sound like a super heartless bastard. I come across like that sometimes. I don't mean to. But I'm my family is from Italy. I say that in my grandmother and grandfather moved over here on a boat in Italy through Ellis Island, made their way to Memphis by their own families and hooked up in some little Italian area of Memphis. All right. That that's where my family is. The entire country of Italy could be wiped out by this thing. And while I think it'd be tragic, it'd not affect my life. Okay. Yeah. The small town of Luca, Italy, where my ancestors are from, I saw family there. That, that, Cause I don't know those people. Okay. I don't know them. One person, my mother, could be taken out from it, and nobody else in the rest of the world be hurt, and this thing devastate me and bring me to my knees. Yes. it It's just the way you got to look at it that way. Oh, we yeah. look at numbers on a toll and say, oh, well, it got these people, and oh, we're actually doing better than we thought we were, or some people think, oh, we're doing worse than we thought we were. Regardless of if you're a glass half full or a glass half empty kind of person, it's irrelevant. It, when it hits somebody you know, it's far more real. Oh yes, than it ever was. At Michael and jumped so in far, on Twitch. I'm lucky enough to not have it hit anybody I yeah. know, and so I use the celebrities that it hits to drive home points to the people that I love to say, "This shit's real." Yes, hundred percent. I know this lady's name. I know her son's name. Yeah, uh, Michael. Michael said, "I think people underestimate how bad this disease is because it doesn't affect them personally." But something like this definitely puts it into perspective. I've got friends that still call me regularly 
that think that this is a gigantic hoax. And they think it's a hoax. Uh, I know. It, now, this was what was given to me last Friday. Uh, I got a call Friday morning, kept me on the phone talking about all these conspiracy theories, da 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 And it was, man, you know, we live in Memphis, and, or we live around Memphis, and there's over 1,200 people in this county that have coronavirus, and you're telling me that we don't know any of them? And I said, there are 1.2 million people that live in the greater Memphis area and 1,200 of them have tested positive. That does not mean that we don't know somebody that has it. That means we don't know somebody that has tested positive for it because not everybody's going to get tested because there's not enough tests. There's still not enough tests. So the best thing to do is to stay inside. Do what you've been told to do. Yes. Follow the CDC guidelines. Don't listen to the president. I put down floors for a living, okay? I don't know what the hell I'm doing. We talk sports. We lose money every year, and and I put down hardwood floors for a living. This is what I do, yeah. okay? I, I listen to people like Dr. Fauci because I don't know anybody else to listen to. Yeah. Right? That's it. If I knew somebody else and you're politically against Dr. Fauci, then then I don't know what to tell you. I don't have anybody else in my pocket that I can call. But Dr. Okay? Fauci isn't political. He's not political at all. He's, he's, he's not, just he's a not, guy now, that, that studies this you stuff. Can, if you Google him, you will find <laughs> political people on the left attacking him and political people on the right attacking him, which tells me he's probably doing a pretty damn he's good job. Probably doing what he's supposed to do. Everybody hates him. One guy thinks he's defending <laughs> Trump, and the other guy thinks he's taking his kneecaps out. And I say... That's a guy I probably need to be listening to. Yeah. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. And so I tell my mom, no, you can't give the girls anything for Easter. You sit your ass in that car and you set it outside of my driveway. And when you drive off, I'll walk out there and get it. It's, or or I'll walk out there and I'll spray it with Lysol and then I'll bring it in in 10 yeah. minutes. But like you don't that's come what in we here. do. <laughs> you, you don't see them. Hey, you know what we did for, uh, for Easter? Like for Easter dinner? What's that? Ordered Hooters. <laughs> We, we ordered chicken wings last the night. Wife throw, the wife throw a tank top on for old time's sake? Hey, you know what I wish she had? Good gracious. No, she didn't. But it, it, it kind of it brought back some nostalgia for her. That she told me exactly what to order. She was like, low, uh, uh, lots of tots, and we need hot uh, original style, and I need some Daytona wings. I need some, you know. D- so it, she told me exactly what to order. Uh, because, I, honestly, I hadn't been in years. But for Welcome. anybody that doesn't know, if you are new to the show... Uh, that's where I met my wife was the, the Hooters in downtown Memphis. She was, uh, she was a waitress there. And I'd said on the first night that I ever saw her that I was going to marry her and I'll be damned if I didn't. So now what it didn't tell you is <laughs> the last six times before that he went into Hooters. He said that about, no, no, no. I didn't, as well. I, I didn't say the same thing about any of them other ones. He just, I hey, saw listen, her. You keep putting it out there. It's like fishing. You keep throwing your worm out there. Hey, no, I, so I wasn't one of them's going to bite. I'll tell you this. I wasn't going to get married to nobody. I Except know, for her, because she came up with I that know. little southern accent with that, hey, darling, how you doing? And, and I'm like, all right. And I, it took me three years to get her to be attracted to me. But, no, you know, happens. I, I kept working Listen. on it. Just, just whittle her down. <laughs> whittle her down. Break her spirit. I like that. <laughs> Michael just said, ha, ha, Chris letting out secrets. Yeah, it's secret time. Secret time. Vert Kreischer style. That's right. There you go. Listen. Uh, right. yeah, 